In the mid-1800s, Impressionist artists began painting on location, or in plein air, a French term meaning in the open air. Prior to the invention of metal tubes in the 1840s, most landscapes were painted in artist studios as they had no way to store or transport their hand-mixed paints. This was extremely important to Impressionists because they focused on trying to capture the light and how it changed throughout the day. Portable paints and in plein air gave them the ability to capture light in real time using quick brush strokes and therefore allowed them to easily leave their studios to study the light and atmosphere in nature and paint on site with their now transportable tubes of paint. Today, artists seek to capture that same intriguing light and shadow outdoors and gather in plein air events across the country, turning ordinary scenes into extraordinary works of art. What makes in plein air Texas different from the other events across the country? In 1921, in Tiny Cristobal, just south of San Angelo, local artists found the Texas Artist Camp, which grew to be one of the leading plein air gatherings in the Southwest. Let's take a look into the past and imagine what it could have been like during that time. Can you imagine yourself making a journey lasting from two weeks to two months in an open air vehicle with a rigid suspension system accompanied by a dozen other people sitting side by side on hard bench seats and traveling over dirt roads and rugged terrain? On this imaginary journey, you would sleep on the ground in the open air with only a blanket. Before the sun was up, a stern voice would awaken you as you ate a light breakfast and you would discuss the day challenges and receive instruction on how to address them. Thereafter, you would go in small groups and explore and observe the terrain around you and make notes. In the course of these meanderings under the hot burning sun, you would frequently encounter rattlesnakes and experience the occasional fall with resulting sprained joints and bruised and bloody limbs. In the late afternoon and evening, your group would gather together again and talk about the notes that each had made, which were actually small paintings and drawings. And then, in exhaustion, you would pull up your blanket and go to sleep. What unfortunate souls would ever wish to make such a journey or be commended to such conditions? The astonishing fact is that such a merry band of travelers did exist and gathered in the summer for over 40 years, lasting until 1939. The participants would vary from year to year and usually consisted of wealthy women or two, a few young people, as young as 15, accompanied by appropriate chaperones, and several men, all of whom were delighted to be able to make the journey across country. The journeys ranged all across West Texas and sometimes into New Mexico and Arizona. The old Ford touring buses that transported them was nicknamed the Cicada. The strict but kindly leader was a man loved and adored by many. It was a great honor to make this treacherous but thrilling journey in his company. His name was Frank Ray, and he is known to us today as the Dean of Texas Painters. Ray brought his own Texas twist to in plein air by drawing, sketching, and even painting on horseback. Observing the herds of cattle while working, he fell in love with the land and developed a passion for the longhorns that he observed, even making sketches while in the saddle. He wrote that no animal on earth has the beauty of the Texas steer. A hundred years later, the same inspiration that attracted Frank Ray and those early painters when they arrived way out west is alive today. The prestige and success of in plein air comes down to the details. Importantly, the artists are selected and the competition is judged by nationally respected jurors and judges in the field of art. Also important is the fact that the event is run by an accredited nationally awarded museum, the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts. Okay, so who are we here with today? Uh, Debbie Carroll nice from Cristobal. Nice to meet you. I've met you before, but nice to meet you again. Thank you for being here today. Oh, sure. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So... You, like you were talking about earlier, you had, you're speaking here at the EPAD event. For those who may not know, do you want to talk about what In Plan Air is? Yes. Uh, In Plan Air is a, uh, it's a, an event that we have in St. Angelo. Um, well, actually, there's many events all over the country, but the event that we have in San Angelo is on, uh, on Plein Air, Texas, and it's a painting competition where the artists come from all over the country, paint outdoors uh, for about a week, and then we take all of our paintings and show them in um, the Stampede, which is the what they call the event where they, they show all the artwork that the artists have done during the week. And um, and people have the opportunity to buy those pieces and, uh, and see what the artists did. What would you tell kids about being a professional artist and how to get into art? Well, I would tell them that they, um, I would encourage them to go to school. Right. Of course, because I think 
the more you can know, because really being an artist is like being an entrepreneur or a small business owner, if you're going to do it for a living. Mm -hmm. And so you do need to know like how to market yourself and, um, and do your books. I would tell kids if they wanted to do that, to, to go to school. And there's a lot of different avenues that you can do as Mm -hmm. an artist. You know, you could be an illustrator. Um, you could go into, um, well, interior design, it, it's a uh, more of a 3d, you mm-hmm. know, um, but there's a lot of the graphic design. I went to school for graphic design for a while too. Mm-hmm. So I've got it's a lot of different things. And you, you use all those things that you, um, learn and the graphic designs come in handy because, you know, I feel like that helps me with websites. But I mean, if a, a child was going to go to school and go to school for art, you know, I would encourage them to take marketing classes and maybe even some legal classes. Kind of. What is marketing? Because I, I, I haven't taken business. So what's... It's promotion, it basically. yourself on like Facebook um, and Instagram? Yes. Well, I think, you know, in this day and age, the artists have a real um, advantage because... You know, back in the day, you didn't have those ways of promoting your work. You could be in a gallery, and that was a way of promoting your work, but through a secondary person that is going to um, take 50%. As far as promoting, I think social media has been really a boon to to artists these days because, you know, um, it's it's free. You know, all it really takes is your time and effort, and... You know, I really, if people are going to do that, I really encourage them to be authentic about their their posts and be real. Um, don't be afraid to share. I, I try not to really sh- share anything bad. I don't want to, to sound like I'm whining or complaining. Um, I like to keep it upbeat. And, you know, because, I mean, not every day is great. You're not selling stuff every day. You know, it's, but, you know, there's plenty of good things to focus on. So in plain air, what I notice is, is the prices are fairly high so do you how do you go about pricing your art and then in art fairs is it priced the same or it should be your pricing pricing should be i tell other artists this all the time when they ask me it needs to be consistent um because if people are buying from you they don't want to buy a piece and then see something similar for a much lower price they're going to feel like they were um you know cheated or right. whatever but um no it needs to be consistent um it is kind of hard starting out to know where to start but i did learn early on and i learned this from doing the jewelry like having a low price point wasn't necessarily always a good thing because there's a perception that when a price is low something isn't good right. so there is a whole psychology to pricing and um you know, the general rule of thumb right now is, you know, you should be increasing your price by 10% every year if you can. For closing statements, do you have any advice for anyone in general or young artists? Or? Uh, for, I would say just, you know, if um, you find something you like, but don't be afraid to experiment and try different things. Because I did a workshop where um, it was outside of my comfort zone, you know, it was watercolor with abstracted shapes. And I took okay. it from a man, Stephen Kilburn, who he's a potter and a painter in Taos. You know, I really didn't find my voice, uh, my, my style as a painter. And people ask me that all the question, or all the time that question, um, until I did that workshop Mm -hmm. and just let myself be very open to what he was trying to show us simplify um maybe that would be my message simplify 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 and practice 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 you know and where can we find your work website socials um i do have a website which is um debbiecarolfineart.com well thank you for being here today and for talking with us oh absolutely thank you for inviting me it's been very enjoyable and i appreciate it awesome okay